Hey everybody, Mobile Gamers Unite here. A day late, but never a dollar short, all right? Um, so in Last Claudia, we finally have an addition to the storyline, which is awesome. I really wanted to get on here yesterday uh, and kind of go through everything. But I'll be honest with you guys, uh, an anime that I've really been waiting for just like premiered on Netflix, and I thought I was just going to watch an episode or two to kind of get the feel of it. And I ended up just having a whole damn marathon. Like, I watched Netflix all day yesterday. Couldn't record. Um, anybody that wants a good anime to watch, check out Doro Hidoro. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's definitely making my top list. So, I already can't wait for season two to come out. Which brings us to, uh, well, Last Claudia. Right? A lot of things have happened. We have a new character that we're going to be looking at. Um... Her banner, where is this girl? Here she is. Um, Tenkili the Diva. Okay. Um, what can I say? At least it's not Ariana Grande pretending that she plays gotcha games. All right. Uh, we got this girl. Well, I didn't get her, but some of you may have. Um, so we're going to talk about that. There's some arcs. So what I've been hearing about the new storyline is uh, to get through that forest, to unlock the rest of the story, you have to take care of some fairy business. You got to go, I don't know, catch a fairy, and then when you go back into the forest, you know, it, it asks you which path you want to go on, and a fairy will appear, and it'll tell you which way to go. So this is just what I've been hearing. Um, obviously, there's already guides up for this, but I'm just going to tackle it when I have time. Really, I've been researching this character and kind of comparing her to other characters. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys right off rip, um, here's my opinion on this type of character in this game right now. If you're just starting to play Last Claudia, maybe you missed out on uh, the Rick Sanchez banner and you, you couldn't pull him as a support character. Uh, well, this girl's here. She is a non-limited. She's a non-limited support hero. Okay, so right off rip, what are some of the pros to rocking this girl? Other than she looks pretty cool. Um, first of all, all of her support abilities. If we actually look at her abilities. Well, let's see. Um, I know that they're AOE. Right, this girl doesn't have. I don't think she has any uh, real single target thing. All of her support abilities are going to affect her whole party. In one foul swoop, everybody will get buffs. Um, yeah, let's look at her skill tree. So, like Brave Phaser, this is all allies get 20% strength. This is nothing new. We've had these. Alright, and we also have like the single target version of a lot of these. But it's nice that she has enough of these just to cover the whole party with everything. So Brave Phaser is all allies. Auro Phaser is all allies. Metis Phaser, all allies. So she's going to buff the party very quickly. Um, Speed Phaser, yep, all allies. She gets Heat Live. This is an amazing, amazing ability. Um, this will stack with haste. And this is just like another form of haste. All allies skill recovery speed plus 25%. That's absolutely amazing. That is very good for skill based characters. She's going to be able to keep characters like that fed. And you're going to be able to like mix this with haste so that your um, skill recovery speed is plus 50%. I think that's absolutely awesome. That's great that she has something like this heat live. Uh, I'm all for that. Um, then we have Magna Exciter. All allies, physical attack power, plus 20%. So this is important to remember. Everybody's going to be able to do 20% more uh, with, their, with their physical attack power. Um, pretty much the way I look at this is this girl doesn't really have any breaks on the enemy. So if we compare other units like Rick Sanchez, he can actually, uh, you know break the enemy, lower their defense, he can lower their elemental resistance, which leads to you doing more damage. Since this girl can't actually break the enemy, she's just going to give everybody 
uh, plus 20% physical attack power. That's definitely going to help offset the fact that she's not actually breaking enemies down. Uh, we have Devotion. Consumes almost all hit points and magic points to give other allies 50% strength and int. Um, and this costs 200 magic points. So this is kind of an iffy thing. This is I'd actually have to play around with this and see if it's worth its weight in salt at all because um, that's a lot to give up for that buff. Um, but it is plus 50% to strength and intelligence. So, um, man, it's expensive though, right? Uh, then we have advanced magic circles. She gets some passives. MP up 3, MP up, uh, Pose of Glory, nothing really new here, Goddess Kiss, um, she can keep her MP fed with that, Blessed Speed so she can run away, she gets Holy Aura, Boost, Equip, Weapon, Attack, I don't know why they put this in here, they could have gave her something to actually help her, Quick Trigger, this is important for her because she is a skill based character, um, yeah, when she's when she's not uh, using buffs and using her MP, she's obviously going to be using her skills. We're going to look at her skills in a minute. Uh, they do some pretty cool things uh, regarding SC, I believe. She gets decoy, which is nice, and determination. And then she gets concentration, uh, reduces faint time. This is good. Like, you don't want uh, your buffer or your support character to be fainted. And then finally she gets Last Song. So 90 seconds into surviving each wave, user gives all allies permanent Brave, Aura, Metis, and Fortification Effects, Fort Effects. Um, I don't exactly know what that last one is. The point is, 90 seconds into the wave, 90 seconds into the fight, she's going to give you a bunch of buffs. Um, the thing is, 90 seconds is already like an eternity to survive so like the way I look at it is you're gonna start the fight you're going to drop a whole bunch of buffs um, and you know what maybe this this last song thing gives her a chance to uh, to use devotion right because um, depending on how many MP she has she can start off the fight, throw a bunch of buffs, or however many buffs she can throw, and then she can throw a devotion, completely drain herself. Um, you know, and then if she manages to survive for another 70 seconds or whatever, last song will kick in, and even though she has no magic points because you drained her, um, you drained her using devotion, she'll still be able to throw everybody all of these free buffs and kind of keep everybody buffed. That's kind of the way I see Devotion and Last Song working together. Um, you know, I, I can kind of see that happening, but again, 90 seconds is a long time. Uh, you know, most fights are over in 90 seconds, but this can be useful against some gnarly boss. Assuming that she can survive for 90 seconds, um, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'd have to see how well this works with, like, decoy and determination. I don't know if that counts as surviving. If you have to use decoy, um, we, I, I'd have to see about that. Regardless, this is pretty much what this girl is going to do. She's going to AoE buff. Um, as far as traits go, uh... Arena Cheers, Special Gauge, rises accordingly to the number of enemies and allies on the field. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, so, just the more people you have running around, um, the faster her Special Gauge rises. Alright, and then we have... Cudorial Idol. I, I get it. Cudorable. So, they used cute and adorable. They put it together in a word. Cudorable Idol. Um, when a staff, clothes, or accessory is equipped, show the true power of skill and specials. We might have a weird translation here. Um, it looks like this has something to do with the power of skills and specials. Uh, I'm still kind of a little iffy on that one. That could be good. 
Um, this could add something to something or something. We, I don't know. This is weird. When a staff closer accessory is equipped, show the true power of skill and specials. Again, that could mean a lot of things. Okay, so um, if anybody kind of knows anything about this, please leave a comment. The comments are open on this character, right? Uh, she does have a cute little dance that she kind of does. She's got a cool little sprite. She's just like shucking and jiving over here. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I, I, I dig the sprite. I dig the sprite. Good movement. Then we get over to her abilities. Um, she has spread echo. It's a light combo attack in a medium area around the user. Strength of human units within range plus 20%. So she's good in a human party. She's going to give other humans you know, more strength. Uh, this is cool. Like if you're running Celios and maybe you're running Kyle and you have her. Celios and Kyle, because they're human, they're going to get plus 20% to their strength. And we know how Last Claudia works. Everything stacks. So, you know, this plus 20%, this can go a long way. That's very nice. Then we have Killer Tune. I read this and I kind of got excited, but then, no, no. I thought it was going to maybe apply some sort of killer or something, but it's a long-range front light attack. Scatters upon impact for a medium-range combo attack. So it really has no utility in it whatsoever. So when I read this, I started kind of getting worried a little bit because here's the thing. This is this character's S2, okay? Historically speaking, S2s, um, they're, they're healing abilities for a lot of support characters. Uh, I'll, we'll look at some other support characters, but even Rick Sanchez, his S2 heals everybody. I would much rather have a healing ability on this girl than Killer Tune, which really just does some damage. It's a combo attack from from a support character that's going to have lower stats anyway. Um, the fact that this doesn't really have any utility kind of had me worried. Um, we have Star Halation, a long range frontal light attack in a straight line. Activates a barrier to have physical damage for all allies that's really good that's good utility right not only is this going to attack everybody in a straight line it's going to put up a barrier around everybody that's going to give you 50 percent physical damage reduction now i don't know how long this barrier lasts it could last for one hit it could last for you know 10 seconds so that's something that has to be researched but there's some potential there right like you know you see a boss dropping a big nuke that's physical damage you know you can hit him with star halation and you know cut down on that damage so even if it is only for a couple hits or for 10 seconds if you timed it right this could be very effective in keeping your party alive then we have cosmic stage uh, grants a damage boost effect for all allies skills and specials so you're going to use this and then your allies skills and their specials are going to do more damage um, so it's like this girl really favors physical attackers and she favors skill based characters she's really good at feeding skills um, with that live heat ability and then she can actually power up your other characters skills um, and specials so you obviously want to use cosmic stage before you start dropping specials with your other characters to increase all that damage um, you know I still feel like killer tune could have been healing tune um, because that's kinda of what this girl has to compete with we'll look at some other characters that are similar to this girl but their s2 is going to be a healing ability so um, yeah, she's just really an, a physical, offensive supporter for skill-based characters is what it seems. If we look at her summary, there's not really any impressive stats here at all. Um, 700 intelligence, you know, everything's in the 6-700s. Her MP is 165, a little over 3,500 hit points. Um, she gets some light resistance and dark resistance, and then she gets minus 10% to uh, Thunder, Earth, uh ice and fire so really nothing too impressive here okay um, so really that's this girl in a nutshell 
Um, you know, things to note though, Heat Live is I was pretty impressed by Heat Live. Just from reading it, I was like, sweet, this is something that we can stack. Um, this is something that really favors a character like Sukasa, who really, really needs help charging up his skills. But uh, if his skills are charged, uh, the dude's just like a machine gun. He can just he can just throw these crazy abilities that do tons of damage, crazy break, and we have a character like this that can feed him. Okay, uh, so as far as like the actual buffs that she does, they're nothing crazy. They're like the buffs that we already have, but they're all AOE buffs. Um, so she can power up the whole party fairly quickly, as opposed to other buffers that they're going to go through and they're going to use single target buffs. Um, you know, and they're going to have to go and they're going to have to buff each character individually. I feel like this girl, she can cast one or two spells and everybody can have two buffs on them that are fairly powerful, nice 20% buffs. Um, so, yeah, she's definitely uh, a good support character, like I said, for um, physical skill-based characters, for humans especially, especially if you can start stacking some of um, her buffs and her abilities um, with, with the magic that she's using, right? Um, downside, though, there's no healing with this girl whatsoever okay um oh let's look at her staff let's look at uh this girl does have obviously um some gear that you can get through the shop uh, let's see let's see where are her her credentials. So here's you can get diva credentials. Um, they should have called them backstage passes or something. Come on, guys. They always have to be credentials. So the cosmic pop. This thing is pretty gnarly, actually. For a staff, this is going to give five strength. It's going to give 110, 110 intelligence, 30 MP, and 115 mind. Um, Tinkili, the diva only. Duration of buffs cast by you plus 20%. This is really good. We have other items that can supplement this. This girl can have like a plus 40-50% duration to her buffs if you equip her with this and some other accessories. That's good. Uh, that makes it so that you don't have to recast your buffs. Um, you know, especially if I'm looking at her right and you know she does that whole thing where she loses all of her magic points. Um, you want your buffs to last as long as possible so that you don't have to reapply them. Pretty much you just want everything to last at least 90 seconds because then she rebuffs everybody for free as long as she survived the whole time. So the duration to the buffs can help a lot. Um, and then when special activates, recover a skills SCT once. This is something that I'd have to test. You know, is that for everybody? Is that just for her? Is it which skill is it? Is it a random skill? Um, all in all, though, this staff is pretty gnarly just because it increases the duration of her buffs. A character like this really needs that because, again, she's not bringing any healing, um, so her buffs have to be concrete. She has to get everybody super powered up so that they take less damage because she can't exactly restore hit points herself. Um, now she can, you can put healing abilities on this girl, obviously, because it is Last Claudia. You can eat up some of her SC and just put just like a basic bitch heal on her. Um, just something very simple, healing wins or something like that. Um, I just don't see that really keeping up with other healers <clears throat> that can heal from their skill set. And then they can also cast healing wind or whatever. Also, I don't see anything that's actually increasing her cast speed um, you know and th these buffs they cast fairly quickly the problem becomes when you're trying to spam healing wind because that's the only thing you really have and you're not casting it fast enough to keep up with the damage that's coming in um, so all in all I mean she's not a mediocre character she, she's not a top ranked character by any means but if you just started playing last Claudia and you know you need a buffer that you can also put some healing abilities on that can affect your whole party that can really help um, 
uh, a skill-based uh, frontline attacker setup. Um, this girl definitely is pretty awesome. But if we look at some other heroes, um, let's see. How about right here? Right, we have Summoner Lena, and we have Warlock Lena. Like Summoner Lena has Hollowed Light. Her S2, bam, recovers HP to all allies, and it buffs Mind. Um, you know, she can also. Um, let's see. This girl can also buff, right? And in fact. I'm pretty sure this girl can buff for some higher percents, but there's single target buffs. So the thing is, if we were running uh, parties of five, um, things would be different. You would want somebody that can just buff everybody, but typically you're, you're running a party of three plus a companion. Um, so this girl has, oh, well, that's the wrong ability to look at, but like Grand Aura, right? Um, this is giving an ally 35% more intelligence. That's This is an amazing buff, right? The AoE version of this is only 20%, but it's to everybody. But really think about that. Like, uh, defensive buffs, you might want to throw um, AoE style on everybody. Um, you know, 20% defense and uh, mind. Yeah, you want that on everybody because it's going to minimize the damage that you take. But when you're talking about offensive buffs, Instead of just giving everybody 20% intelligence, I would rather specifically put 35% intelligence on an actual caster. Because, really, what is Grand Aura going to do for Celios or somebody that really doesn't use their intelligence at all? Um, so I feel like for defensive buffs, you're, yeah, it's great to have AoE defensive buffs so you can defensively buff your whole party instantly. But for, for going offense, unless you're running... Uh, a team that is all going to use either intelligence or attack, I would rather individually buff people offensively if I'm getting a higher percentage, right? So uh, the Divas uh, aura buff, it's, it's a 20%, but it's to everybody. So, I mean, I guess if you're running all mages, that's cool. But realistically, um, that's only going to help a mage. And chances are you're probably only going to be running one of them. So the other two heroes that you have getting 20% more to their intelligence isn't really going to do them much. Um, let's see. She also has... Where is it? High Vitality, right? Um, increases an ally's max hit points by 1,000 and recovers hit points. So... Uh, the D.Va doesn't have things like this. She doesn't really have much to bolster hit points and healing um you know that's just kind of the, the this is just one of the kind of the downsides to her build that i'm looking at is for other support heroes like lena um it's very easy for her to heal and to actually bolster your hit points to increase your hit point pool that's something that you can target a specific character with um, and obviously the healing from Hollowed Light is always, always useful. Um, so this is just kind of like some of the things that D.Va has to keep up with. Um, that she really can't because she's not going to be healing anybody. Right? Um, so that's kind of what I think about this character. But this character is not the only thing on this banner. Right? We have two SSR arcs again. Right? It's like they're flooding us with SSR arcs. And I'm totally cool for that because that's more abilities and more things to teach to our heroes. Um, so the Venom Dragon... Budlad. Well, whatever. It's the Venom Dragon. Okay, this thing's gonna... It's all about Venom. It's gonna poison you. Um, this thing doesn't really have the highest strength. Um, it has a good intelligence. But when support, magic, debuffs are granted lower hit points when support magic debuffs are granted lower hit points and eh. special train only i don't know what train that is they could have put that in parentheses that would have been nice magical damage plus 40 percent this is be pretty damn good for a mage poison deadly poison resistance plus two so i'm gonna give you some of that poison resistance the arc ether reward is pretty amazing on this this is a dark property claw 
It's got 170 strength, and it also gives 66 intelligence. Um, but the important thing is that regular attacks have a chance to poison an enemy, and damage to poison enemies is plus 50%. So this is a good setup for poisoning. You're going to, you know, do some stuff with that. And then you're also going to get more damage to enemies that are poisoned. This can do a lot. Um, it would require the right setup, and it is a dark attribute um, attack claw. So all in all, this thing's pretty gnarly. Um, and if we actually look at the abilities that this thing teaches, it's a lot of poison stuff, like poison cloud, um, terra melt's always nice, poison nil, um, changes poison weakness to poison resistance so I mean that that's good if we're ever fighting one of these venomous dragons um, venomous rainfall dark attack against all enemies chance to inflict poison so this is cool it's just like that ice rainfall ability that we have but I think that one has a chance to decrease people's defense um, Anula Meth Meath um, this is good like I've actually been waiting for this this is what those pokies are constantly casting on us. Um, decreases status, ailment resistance for all enemies. Um, I believe this is going to increase your chance of being poisoned and you know things like that. So this is really good if you're trying to you know put your enemy into a status ailment. Um, you want to drop those resistances with this and then try to poison them. You're more likely to poison them that way, so that's good. And then we have Dark High Boost. Always good to have. Dark Magic Damage plus 30%. I don't... Man, I can't recall off the top of my head if any other arcs are giving Dark High Boost right now. But uh, these two last abilities, they're totally worth it. Um, I wouldn't mind having this just for you know special builds. Um, to fight enemies that, you know, actually can be poisoned and just kind of taking that whole route with it. Man, this guy does look pretty gnarly. He's a pretty scary, scary looking dragon. So, all in all, this arc, you know, it's nothing to break the bank over. I'm not really stressing it. It'd be cool to get down the road. And then we have Stardust Live. This is obviously uh, Little Diva's arc I mean this is her performing on stage glitter what can I say um, so here is the arc attribute buffs cast by you last longer by 35% so notice her staff also gives her you know 20% more so there's 55% more to her buff durations if you're using this arc on the diva and if you have her staff um, you can increase that up to like a 75% if you have the right pieces of e equipment, uh, specifically accessories, to put on her. 70 more percent to your buff duration is pretty damn skippy. Like, your buffs are going to last a long time. And it increases the maximum stock of all skills by one. And it gives you illness resistance plus two. So the skill stock of all skills by one, that's pretty cool. That, that can be used by a lot of uh, skill-based characters. I mean, people that you're going to put this on. Um, you might want to actually run this arc on any other one of your healers that has support ability so you can take care you can take advantage of this of your buffs lasting longer. Um, and like a character like Lena, who actually has skills that can heal people, um, you know, getting an extra stock to all your skills can be pretty awesome. Um, we start looking at the skills on this thing. Pulls of Victory, nothing new. Skill, stock, skill two. I always constantly get these confused. I get the stock skill confused with the skill charge. This is stock skill. This is going to increase the amount of that one particular skill, which would be skill number two in this instance, that you know you can have by one, right? Um, this is important to me because skill number two for a lot of support uh, heroes is going to be a healing skill. Um, it is for Mr. Rick Sanchez. 
it is for Lena, it's for Summoner Lena. Um, skill number two is their healing skill. And I wouldn't mind on certain heroes to have, you know, an extra stock of that skill just so you can spam some crazy healing when the time comes. Um, this is very good for charging that healing skill up during um, you know the pre-boss fight where you're fighting uh, just little cannon fodder you can charge up skill number two hopefully go into the boss fight with an extra stock in that skill um, and that can go a long way you know that can keep your party alive um, just things that I've noticed so skill stock two I wouldn't mind having on a lot of the different support heroes that we already have moving on we have holy circle regularly deals light damage to an enemy and reduces dark resistance this is cool I like this um, I think this is already out but holy circles all right especially since I'm rocking Tsukasa he's doing dark damage this is gonna do light damage and it's also going to reduce dark resistance so heroes like Tsukasa can do even more if that sounds even possible because he's already doing so much it's ridiculous speed phaser boosts all allies movement speed um, actually this is an important ability like for we've had a couple of different fights now where the boss breaks your movement so bad that having something like speed phaser um, so that your your units can actually get over to the boss or to your enemy and start doing damage to him um, because like typically what they will do what, what the boss will do is they'll break your movement and they'll hit you with some kind of energy beam and they will push you to the far edge of the screen and while you're trying to run up to them slowly they will charge their next attack so if you can like if you can increase your movement speed for your whole party by just a little bit then you know that strategy will not wipe your party out you can at least keep doing some damage to the enemy while they're pushing you back if you can run back up to him fast enough not all heroes have a skill that cuts the distance between them and their enemy so speed phaser can be very useful for some fights uh, we have close high boost when close are equipped defense and mind plus 10 percent and physical attack damage plus 10 percent um, this is 9 sc um, man it's just for the sc like this is still a good abil ability because it's going to give you some defense in mind and it's also going to give you some physical attack damage it's just man I wish it was uh, you know six or seven SC I would totally get behind it it's just at nine SC it's hard for me to fit something like this in on most builds right and last but most definitely not least we have heat live I was so happy to see this I was so happy to see this that they're actually giving us heat live as an ability all allies skill recovery speed plus 25 percent wow this kind of is taking away from mini diva well why did i just call her mini diva oh man wrong website <laughs> um this is kind of taken away from her because now that's not a custom ability now mr rick sanchez can have heat live yeah it's going to cost 15 sc but you know all allies skill recovery speed plus 25 percent man I would spam the hell out of that I'm um, gonna cost it costs 30 MP but I would much rather have this than not have this I'm so glad that they they put this out there as an ability that we can teach to our heroes that this isn't specifically just locked in to uh, the divas um, set so as soon as I saw this I was like okay that's wicked okay that that to me that's worth some pulls to me um, if we look at the arc ether reward we get her tail coat nullify strength intelligence defense and mind debuff so it's just it's gonna make you undebuffable yeah undebuffable and it's gonna give you 300 hit points 20 MP 145 defense and 126 mind this is pretty gnarly for for a clothing set um, this is giving high defense high mind some magic points this is great for a caster um, and it's gonna give you know res not a resistance immunity immunity to debuffs so that's pretty cool um, it's also gonna give you 
10 light resistance. It's so very nice. Um, very powerful piece of clothing right there. But all in all, this Heat Live thing, um, I'll be honest with you guys, if it wasn't for this, I myself would not uh, want to pull on this banner at all. Because, I mean, I have Rick Sanchez. I have um, a, a strong support character already. And um, he's able to also break the enemy. And he's able to heal, right? So it's going to be really, really hard for me to want to use this girl as spunky as she looks if I have Mr. Rick Sanchez there who can throw bad chemicals on people, break their stats, and break their, um, their elemental resistance so that my other characters can do more damage with different elements. You know, and then Rick Sanchez can also keep everybody healed. Um, you know, and his skill set, it reduces, you know, the amount of damage the enemy can do. And effectively, I could put all of the same spells on him if I wanted him to be able to give everybody plus 20% defense with one single buff. Um, again, Mr. Rick Sanchez, he has doping. I do believe they are single target, but they're a higher percentage than 20%. If I'm wrong on that, I'm sure somebody will correct me, but I can't really well justify anybody pulling for this girl. If you have Mr. Rick Sanchez, or if you have um, even, like, if you already have Summoner Lena and you're invested into her and she's built and you have time put into her, you know, I, I don't really see any content that this girl's going to be able to clear that, uh, you know, the other healers aren't going to be able to clear. I mean, that's just the, the, the best way I can put it is um, uh, I still think that some of the other heroes are still very sufficient to fulfill this role, right? Like Lena, Summoner Lena, Warlock Lena, um, they can effectively kind of do a lot of the same things. These girls can't give you an SCT boost, um, so that is one awesome thing that the D.Va has going for herself, and she can strengthen other people's skills. Um, I guess that's just like the biggest thing, but then these girls can heal. They have a heal built into their skill set. You don't have to use magic points um, to heal people. They can do it off of their skills, so towards the end of the fight, when you're running low on MP, maybe you saved up a bunch of the healing skill and you can start spamming that. I've done that in a couple fights. Works out well for me. Um, you know, but I do like that this D.Va has kind of like this contingency plan when she runs out of magic points. Um, even if she's standing there with no MP, she's going to reapply a bunch of buffs onto everybody 90 seconds into the fight. That's if you make it that long. Um, all in all, an interesting character, though, and if you add up all of the different bonuses that she... Because she's going to give you, you know, the 20% more to physical attack power. She's going to give humans 20% more strength. And then whatever AoE buffs she can cast that are going to have um, a pretty good longevity on the duration of the buff. Like, you know, it's, it's going to last. And then even if she does run out of magic points or she uses that one ability that completely drains her 90 seconds into the fight, you know, a bunch of buffs get reapplied. Cool character. Decent looking sprite. I do like the sprite. She looks cool. All in all, I don't think she's a must to pull for. Now, I know you guys wanted some pull vids, but I couldn't just justify doing a pull vid on this banner. Um... Let's see, but after I did read that uh, that arc, which one was it? Um, after I read this arc, Stardust Live, I was like, okay, um, I feel like this is worth pulling on just to throw a couple pulls in there on the off chance that you might be able to get Stardust Live, okay? Uh, on a side note, this is not a limited character. Um, these are not limited arcs, right? But pulling them off of this banner does increase your chance of getting them. Um, as opposed to just pulling them out of the normal summon pool. So, like I said, I, I, I only had like 2,800 Lapis. So I didn't even have enough to do a 10 pull. And I said, you know what, why not? You know, I'll throw my 8 pulls, whatever it was. Um, 
you guys didn't miss much. I got to the seventh pull. A, a video came up. It was an SSR. A video came up. I got excited. I was like, oh, this is me getting something new. Cool. Um, and then it was a golem arc. I don't understand. Like, I got the video to come up anyway. I thought when you got the cinematic that you're getting something new. I guess I, I could be wrong about that. Um, but it was a golem arc. And I was just like, oh, man, that's disappointing. Um, and then I did my final pull. And it was another SSR. And we did manage to get da, 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 one of these arcs. And can you guys guess what it is before I scroll down to it? Can you guys guess what it is? Um, here it is. We got Stardust Live. So I am very happy about how this went. I cleared this whole banner in eight pulls. Um, because this really is the only thing, in my opinion, at least for my account, that's really worthwhile. Because of the simple fact that I can have Heat Live. I can't wait to play around with this. It is a 15 SC ability, right? But I think if this is applied right, this can definitely... Um, this can help feed a character like Sukasa, who, you know, SC might as well be uh, bullets for his machine gun. Like, that's, that's how powerful he is with his skills. So, um, I've been working on things to feed his SC. Um, I've been working on haste. I just unlocked haste. I spent a bunch of energy unlocking that, um, getting that arc to level 10, just so he can learn haste, and haste is a very expensive ability, um, you know, so he can have haste, and then somebody can cast heat live on him, somebody that has 15 SC to pay for that, but I think that he would absolutely just shred, he'd be able to charge up his skills so quickly, so that's just personally what your boy's working on because I did manage to get Stardust live. So this is all very cool stuff. And like I said, Stock Skill 2, I'm happy with that. I will take Stock Skill 2 for Mr. Rick Sanchez because his his Skill 2 is actually a healing ability. Um, and same thing with uh, Lena, right? Um, so I'm actually pretty happy about Stock Skill 2. I love it when these arcs have... Uh, an ability that's pretty high up on the arc list that's easy to get that is actually usable for us because I just like a lot of the arcs that we get everything up here is just kind of like meh and then when you get to the very bottom there's like one uh, powerful skill that you're actually going to want I feel like the Stardust Live thing um, arc it gives us a few good skills I like it you're getting holy circles in there you're getting speed phaser Close high boost, uh, that's very niche in my opinion because you know, a lot of my units just aren't going to be able to afford to paint, what is that, 9SC um, for that. But then we have Heat Live, which is just off the chain, definitely something I want. Um, and again, this tail coat that comes with it, this is awesome. This is good for just a lot of characters, a lot of support characters, a lot of healers. It is clothing so casters can wear it um, I like it really it's giving you some hit points which a lot of these characters need it's giving you MP nice and the defense and mind stats on this for a piece of clothing are absolutely off the chain along with some light resistance cool right um, so I'm totally digging that so all in all this is pretty much what I've been doing in Last Claudia um, just kind of working on all this stuff. Still working on Mr. Rick Sanchez. Uh, I've noticed that these collab characters are just so damn expensive to build. They require so many, so many <clears throat> of these uh, rainbow gems that I'm having a hard time just finishing off Sukasa. Um, and then I have to go work on Mr. Rick Sanchez. I mean, this thing alone. Here's seven of them. Um, I did just finally level up Righteous Spear all the way up. So, um, and this one took 10 of the Rainbow Crystals. You know, so really this is what I need. I need these Rainbow Crystals because um, Kohaku and Rick Sanchez, they both take a lot of them too. So I'm pretty much just trying to farm that out. Um, and that's what your boy's been doing. But I'm excited that... 
uh, I have an arc that can potentially um, you know increase the potency of this character and make him just drop bombs left and right uh, that's a ways away though right I have to unlock that ability I have to teach it I mean Rick Sanchez he's he's getting a lot of work done on him he's getting a lot of like obviously I'm gonna teach him haste so he can put that on Tsukasa uh, Kohaku really doesn't need haste from what I've noticed she just man she just constantly has skills um, and it's because she feeds her own SC reduction uh, I'm pretty sure she has an ability that reduces her uh, SC cooldown when she's doing damage um, but Tsukasa here he needs somebody else to feed him SC um, and you know, with this last arc that I just got and with haste I think that's going to um, you know improve his quality of play by a lot so I can't wait to see what I can do with that um, oh we might as well touch up on this subject so after my last vid a couple people um, they've said some things back and forth about Thunderbolt Sevia here um, still a very awesome looking character but here's the thing with her people have told me they're like oh I just tried her out um, you know I wasn't impressed um, a lot of people tell me that they're not really impressed with her here's the thing um, I think anybody that un unfortunately the way that they set up this character okay and this is all I'm gonna say is they put 30 percent of this character's power behind a paywall okay um, her two weapons are they're gonna be 30 percent of this character's power if you can't get those weapons you're not really running this girl anywhere near um, her full capacity of power uh, here's the thing if you don't get those weapons for her right uh, let's look at my inventory I've already went and kinda looked through all the different weapons I have just trying to be like okay if I did get Thunderbolt Savia what weapons could I put on her right she obviously needs something that does lightning damage um, I think there's only one or two weapons that even do that and they're doing like 30 40 attack um, actually you know what one of them was a hammer um, which was an SR hammer this thing it's a five star hammer she this is a hammer though uh, I don't even know if she can use a hammer she has she wants to use swords um, and really there's nothing like there, there's nothing if you do find some sort of like here this thing this is you have to have equipped machine I don't know if she has it or not but this has thunder um, element on it and it's 42 attack uh, really though I mean I could give her like the mana blade or something like that the thing is you're missing out on so many abilities if you don't have her weapons um, it's kind of unfortunate I really don't like how they did that because now if you pull that character if you don't have those swords it's kind of pointless to level her up because without those swords is she going to keep up with the Randys and the Sukasas of the world I don't know it's highly doubtful right and it's not like there's there's arcs that can grind out weapons for her I mean there's really not it's nothing that's on the level of what her weapons are giving her so if you just pull her out of dumb luck if you don't get those swords um, you're never gonna see her full potential and I think that's this is why a lot of people have wrote to me and been like I'm not really impressed with her you know my friend has her at level 100 on the friends list but I'm not really impressed with her I'm like well did you did you look at her gear does she have those swords um, and it's unfortunate that they did that because like I said if you pull her out of dumb luck you're really not that lucky unless you have those swords um, and it kinda hinders her for the future because I mean somebody did say that they will bring her items back um, here's my whole thing I'm totally against what they've done with her and with her equipment unless they bring some sort of event where you can actually grind out gear for these characters All right. Um, that would be cool because then down the road you could at least get those swords or at least one of them or something without having to just pay cash money for it alright also uh, let's look at let's look at a character whose power is a hundred percent within the character okay 
Sukasa, great example of that. Um, let's look at his. Let's look at what his weapon does. Right, this is the weapon that you could get for Sukasa. Um, it doesn't have an element on it. It's 135 attack, which is pretty standard for the hero credential weapons. And this is going to give you 20% more to your killers and slayers. And for arena, pretty much, it nullifies the opponent's evasive effects. The reason I say for arena pretty much is because it's pretty much going to be useful in arena. Okay, so we have a weapon here that has a decent attack. It's going to give you a little to your slayers and killers. Does this make this character? Absolutely not. I could replace this thing easily. I could. I mean, I could go get another spear right now. Yeah, it might only have 100 attack instead of 135. The point is, he would still be comparable. Oh no, I wouldn't get 20% more to my killers and slayers. This guy's doing damage cap without killers and slayers anyway for the most part. Um, and this whole evasive effect, okay, that's useful for arena. Other than that though, this character can just be fine, just fine, without this weapon. Like, it's not a necessity for him at all. Yeah, he can be damn near as strong with plenty of other spears. In fact, they even have, um, they did give us an arc that has a spear that we can grind out for him. Let's see, I was just looking at this thing. Um, yeah, of course, it's, it's the arc that was on his uh, banner. Uh, look at this thing, the silver tip spear. Um, 185 strength and it's going to give him 67 defense and it's going to give him 43 mind uh, poison illness and stun resistance plus one which does help him okay so this is just crazy awesome and I'm because I use Sukasa, I'm going to have to level this thing up just for him to have you know his best in slot spear whatever the point is he has best in slot gear that you can grind out okay Thunderbolt Sevia doesn't have any of that unless I'm wrong and somebody wants to point something out the comments are open pretty much you have to get those damn weapons and you have to pay for them and it's really unfortunate because I feel like it really limits that character um, because let's look at what her weapons do I mean it's just off the chain it's like they cut down some of the heroes power and put that power into the weapons instead um, where can we even get a glimpse of these bad warlocks? I think we have to go into the shop. Um, the point is, her weapons have more abilities on them than I think anybody else's hero credential uh, weapons. Um, to the point where it's almost like, I, I see what you did. I see what you did. You, you took some of this character's power and you put it on to these weapons, right? Um... Like, look at these traits. The, these have to be the most insane traits compared to other uh, hero weapons that we have. Uh, Thunderbolt Selvia, for physical attacks, which is what she does, damage is increased by the number of hits by 50%. Okay, so this girl is going to just get 50% more damage off of this wep. That's also Thunder Element, right? Mm -hmm. um, Sukasa didn't get an element attribute on his weapon, right? He's going to get 20% to killers or slayers. This girl is just going to get 50%. Not 20. She's just going to get 50%. Wow. You know, and this girl, obviously, it's very easy for her to get to, to unlock this 50% um, because she has such a high number of attacks. She can get a, you know, a 50 hit combo on you in, in three seconds. So it's very easy to unlock this 50% more damage. Not 20, 50. That's ridiculous. And then we have this one. Um, hit point recovery effects of skills and special. Another 50%. She ain't messing with no 20s. She's going straight to 50%. Oh, and recover some SCT when using healing magic. Um, just, like, that's just ridiculous. Um, this 50% thing alone is off the chain then they also give her you know an ability to get some SCT back um, and again this is uh, a thunder attribute weapon the point is is really um, I feel like they've taken some of this characters power 
took it away from the actual character herself and put it on these weapons and kind of locked her behind a partial paywall. Not cool. Um, and I feel like I'm not even going to pull because if I do pull this girl, like I have zero hero credentials. I haven't done any paid pulls on this. I'm not going to. Um, you know, because unless you can get 50 of her hero credentials to unlock both of these weapons, I feel like you're kind of wasting your time. You probably have a Randy. Um, you probably have frontline attackers that are going to get more powerful than her if you don't have her weapons. So now, again, if they give us some sort of event in the future where you can actually grind out, um, you know, some of these weapons for some of these characters. That would be cool, and I would be totally for that. Adis, you definitely need to do that. So, um, but in a nutshell, that's why it's slow motion for me right now in Last Claudia, because I can't justify. Um, I've been, as far as I'm concerned, Mini Diva here, damn it, just Diva. Um, that's not Ariana Grande, thank goodness. I I've cleared this banner. Because I got the arc on here. Um, this is the arc that I would recommend getting. Getting if you had your choice in the matter. The Stardust Live arc. This thing is very powerful, most definitely. Um, you know, if you got the Stardust Live arc, you've cleared this banner. Unless you actually need a strong support character um, that has AOE support, um, but no healing, right? So. Um, I've cleared this banner as far as I'm concerned in the eight pulls that I did, so that's cool. And then as far as uh, Thunderbolt Sevia, I haven't even been doing my daily pull on her. I will. I'm the kind of guy that will always do a daily pull just to roll the dice. But like I said, I feel like if I got lucky and pulled this girl off of a daily pull, um, there's 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 really nothing I can do with her because I'm not going to be able to get those weapons. So it's slow motion for me right now because I cleared the one banner in eight pulls and I can't justify pulling on this banner. Um, thank goodness I got the ancient weapon uh, arc off of this uh, because it's the one I wanted that has celestial mass on it. So I got the ancient weapon arc because I'm not going to get the ancient weapons for Thunderbolt Sevia. I'm not going to go through and pay my way through that wall just so I can have two swords for her. Um, I don't feel like that's fair. I don't feel like it's fair for all the players that you know managed to get lucky and pull this character. And I hope that in the future, Adis will remedy this by maybe giving us an event where you can unlock her weapons or you know choose one of the hero's special weapons to unlock. Um, I think that would be cool. So that's what we need to do. Um, somebody has said though that when they bring her banner back, you're gonna be able to, you know, get her weapons again, um, which sounds like they're just gonna give you another chance to pay for them. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Like I said, hopefully they they give us a chance to maybe grind these things out in the future. Who knows? But I do know this, that if you don't have the weapons for this girl, she's going to stay at 70%. And I personally feel, and this is IMO, if this girl's at 70%, she's not going to compete with Randy, let alone Sukasa and a lot of the other top-tier uh, damagers in the game. Uh, we got Kohaku out there tearing it up. So for this girl to stand next to those three or four characters that I just named, you got to have those weapons for her to even have a chance. That's just IMO, my opinion. Please don't crucify me over it. I'm just trying to keep it real. Um, so if you guys you know, have any comments or you want to add anything, the floor is open. We can have a discussion about all this stuff. But pretty much this is what I wanted to talk to everybody about. Um, you know, And then I got just tied up on Netflix watching anime. So I'm sorry that my vid's a day late, but it's never a dollar short. You guys have an awesome day. I wish you all the best luck on all of your pulls. But really think about it um, because you might not need to pull on either of these banners. Um, you know, this banner that just dropped with the Diva. Hey, if you can get that one arc, take your money and run home. Okay? That's just my opinion. Unless you completely don't have any sort of support character at all, then she would be an awesome addition. Um, as a character, especially if you're like running Kyle and maybe some other human, maybe you got Celios, 
Um, so, I mean, that's the good final word on that. So, comments are open. Everybody have an awesome day. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Peace, everybody.